No Simple Road is stoked to have Sunset Lake CBD back with us as our sponsor. Sunset Lake is the real deal. If you've looked around trying to find CBD and it just didn't do what it was supposed to do, this is the place you need to go. They've got every kind of product you can imagine, including CBD tinctures with sleep gummies that are great for getting to bed, CBD gummy bears and reishi infused chews that can help bring you a little bit of calm in a stressful day. They've got salve. They've got smokable hemp flower that's great for folks like me that don't want to get stoned and paranoid, but want to have the benefits of cannabis. Well, now you got it. And they even carry CBD products for your pets, man. I'm saying this is Darwin approved stuff. Go over to sunsetlakecbd.com and check out the full range of what they have. This is Vermont grown right to your door and they're giving you 20% off. So put in the promo code NSR20 when you're checking out, you're going to get 20% off your whole order. And I know you're going to love it. They even have subscription options open for you. So you don't forget to get your medicine. Go check out Sunset Lake CBD, everybody. Why can't every day be like this? No simple road. Yeah, no, I've been on that road too. Hey now, No Simple Road family, welcome to this edition of the No Simple Road Weekly Rewind, brought to you in collaboration with the Edible Beats out of Denver, Colorado. If you aren't familiar with the Edible Beats, I would urge you to head over to the Google machine and check out Edible Beats and see what they're doing, changing the game in the way that people relate to how they go out to dinner and what they what they do, man. Five restaurants over in the Denver area that... Um, are taking farm to table to a new level and creativity to the stratosphere basically so go check out the edible beats man now let's get on with the show Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jack, can you explain the solar flare for us? It's okay, a, solar uh, flare. So this is everything I know about the solar flare. So usually, so Aurora Borealis is apparently, in, it, it starts with a solar flare. So the sun is usually relatively um, stable. The sun? In the, that's the What's sun. That? So that's sun, yeah, up in the sky. Okay, yeah. got yeah. it. <laughs> the orange one. So it's usually what the energy radiates is usually relatively uh, consistent. But then, you know, solar flares come in smaller amounts, higher amounts. This is a big one. So that, now we're able to see that radiation all the way down as far as Alabama is what's going on. So higher radiation levels allow you to see... It, they change colors and look like aurora borealis because the radiation bounces off ice crystals in the atmosphere. Is that right? I think that might it's be true. Right. So, right. Hey, I made that up, but it makes sense. <laughs> that sounds. Believable. I think I read that somewhere. It's, actually, I know the real. the source of these uh, like emissions was from a sunspot that's seventeen times the diameter of Earth. Whoa, that's, that's pretty sun. big. And so, and so we're just getting irradiated. Yeah. It's fine. It's, it's fine because it's all fine. we're all happening together. So we are, we are beings it's of light. Magnetic destruction. Yeah. We are beings of light. We're all here light. together and we love to get irradiated. Um Well, we have the two bookends of the band. So why don't y'all start? You pick which side and then work your way into yeah. let everybody know who's in studio with us today. Yeah, I guess I'll go first. Uh this is Harrison Games, the drummer of the band. Bodhi Mojo. <laughs> of the said band. Of the said band, yeah. Bodhi Mojo, not Bodhi Mojo, not Body Moho. <laughs> Bodhi um, Mojo. Body I Moho is both fun. Of those There's a lot of ways yeah, yeah. To, that you can pronounce it, but you your Bodhi is a wonderland. Yes, your Bodhi is. is a wonderland. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next. Um, I'm Owen. I play keyboards. What's up, Owen? How you guys doing? All right. Who's next? I'm Jack. I play guitar. I play lead guitar. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Chris Stein, I'm on rhythm guitar. What's up, and Chris? Mike on the bass. Hi. What's up, Mike? Mike hey. on the bass. Welcome to the studio. Aww. Good to be here. So, right on. 
uh, we're here to talk about Mojo Family Fest. And uh, Ooh. I, I, I have to say the first one that we went to was uh, at, um, Mel, help me out. What was the that, name of the place? I don't know. Was that park? Camp Oriki? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And we had been like, we'd been doing a lot of stuff that summer and we'd been to a, a lot of shows and a lot of festivals and that was the most fun it was I had so at a relaxing that year. it My, was except for dicks but it, it, it was it a was a different thing. kind Thank of you. fun it, it was home mm-hmm. it was like home and felt so nice out there yeah, yeah and you know when a festival gets you know a few thousand people it's not intimate anymore or it, well not really like think about cascade that's not an intimate festival that's a fucking i felt like thing. it was intimate only because we were kind of had our crew with us like the whole time through this big festival but we kept finding each other okay so that felt intimate to so me. so i'm wrong i agree with mel i think you can you can keep that intimate vibe going i don't know if there's a limit on numbers 2, but it does 2500 people <laughs> okay. harrison, did you look it up thank you harrison <laughs> that's the one of the festivals I went to was 2,500 people. It was like the smallest festival at the time that I went to. And it just, you met the same people okay. throughout the Got time. familiar with but everybody. But there's also enough people there that you could meet new people. Yeah. But also still find people, not get lost. Right. So that's, I think that's a good number, 2,500. Well, because then you, you really are sharing more of the festival experience together. Because sometimes when you're together in a festival, there's a lot happening. So there's a lot of different options. So people could be in a numerous amount of places, but the smaller you scale that down, people are only have so many choices. So they Mm kind of have to be with each other and like meet each other and like say more than just, Oh, Hey, hi, what's your name? Next thing you know, you're talking about your kids or what college you went to or what your playlist is. Go no college. I'm just saying for the hypothetical Uh, person. Uh, Dang. (laughs) But <laughs> you go to no college. You got no degree, Mel. What no, you talking I don't. About? You're right. She does have a degree. She didn't go to college. Uh, I think though the thing with Mojo Family Fest, Apple, you hit it. Is like it's family. Yeah. And yeah. It, for and sure. it, it's it's well our that, that first place. one we went to. I, I it everybody knew everybody. It was it was one of those ones where I felt comfortable like stumbling into somebody's campground at two in the morning and making noise and not having to worry about somebody being like, who the fuck are you? What are you like? Everybody knew everybody. That wouldn't fly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was like, you. You can't do that. Uh, yeah, that was, no, actually that, that, no, that was uh, Aubrey and Jason. <laughs> Aubrey. <laughs> Aubrey and Jason. Oh, oh I remember wait, that. I do that guy, same You guys thing. were asleep and we came in and she's like, Aaron and Mel are sleeping. Bullshit. And it was like two in the morning. We came in okay. camp making I was all sick kinds of noise too. too. I had like, was getting over COVID at that, and it was still yeah. Fun. When I I remember too, you you were, that that was seeing Jack in action yes. at that one because there was some power issues and things, yeah. and you were just running around doing like thirty things at once. Mm-hmm. Plus, weren't so, you like running a mile, like miles in the morning or something like that too? Of course, <laughs> I don't know if I I don't know if I did it then. then. We, well, we planned the naked run. <laughs> the naked run. Plan yeah, there's a, a naked, naked run. There's a naked uh, run. Bring there was back. supposed to be naked run in Naked Falls, which is a mile a mile up okay. the road. Um, it didn't come to fruition, but you know, you can't <laughs> it ended up being just you. <laughs> it's just me. <laughs> it was way more weird. <laughs> Jack, Jack, actually, streaking through Jack the actually paraglided down in the morning. Oh yeah. my God. Naked. Get there. Naked. But that, I, that would be amazing. I think Apple has a great point. Like, one thing I really love about Mojo Family Fest and a lot of other festivals is that there's no very little separation of like what box you're in or what your what role you have like to try to actively dissolve those things is really great and like i i hate that feeling of like when you go up to like a group of people and like you try to say hi and you get like a cold shoulder mm-hmm. like oh this is my vibe this is my crew don't fuck with me yes that like really makes me hurt sometimes yeah. and like it happens to everybody and obviously yeah. we, you can't enforce it or like but it's nice when there's that like Everybody's here together. Art, the artists are also the fans. You know, I, that's an important part. I think. Yeah. What yeah. was the initial like thing that made you want to do this? Because let's be clear, throwing a festival is fucking hard. It's a lot. It's of not work. a huge money maker for the first few years, most of the time, and it's a lot of stress. Plus, you're trying to write music and play shows and be a band and live your life and all that shit. What was the reason that you wanted to start doing it in the first place? Um, yeah. So Mike and I, Mike and I were 
practicing with Bodie Mojo. So Bodie Mojo was just getting going. Mike and I are the OG members. Um, and then that was March of 2020. Our first show was two days before COVID lockdown. Oh, oh. <laughs> so I was like, at that point, I just moved to Portland. So we had a band to do it. And like, I've always wanted to do, like, I love throwing parties and throwing events and stuff. Um, and then fortuitously, my dad, just before COVID, had bought this like little property out in Washougal, right mm-hmm. by Wariki. And, and then I just had the idea, like, and then every, nobody's doing anything during COVID. And I thought that was so silly. I think we can maybe say that now. Okay. Well, I'm going to dial back, but <laughs> I, I was like, I, it's really important to be out in nature and still, you know, in like be together. There's and a really, really clever, I agree. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. There's a really clever and good way to do it at the time. It, the sort of unofficial first one was we were up on sort of a landing that plays down to what was at the time, like a dried out riverbed. So we're about f- like 50 feet up. Get up on it. From him. We're about like 50 yeah. feet up yeah. from everybody who's down, like just having a water day, river day. It was, right. Yeah. It was really cool. That's amazing. It sounds yeah. dreamy. So it was like the, the it was Mojo Fest people started of, it was, it's a group of people that were like, Hey, like fuck this. Like we, yeah. we got to still play music. We got to hang out together. It's not like we were being like super unsafe or anything, but, no, but like, we were going crazy. <laughs> okay, we were going crazy. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. You're safe here. It was kind of born. It was kind of born out of that, like crazy. really, like that dedication to know how important that is and wanting to be together, dude. Yeah, I, I mean, not to rehash COVID or anything, but that I think as it 52 years of being on planet Earth, that was probably the hardest thing i've ever seen that was oh yeah especially for those of us that depend on like being together a lot and experiencing different things it really i mean everybody had a hard time with it but when you're used to doing that all the time and then that's gone part of your identity is removed or or locked up questioned yeah, yeah. Well, and it, they, it they makes us it really fucking be, hard they basically told us we couldn't be a community of any type anymore yeah like six feet stay away from me yeah like, so deciding to do that i it, in my opinion super brave man and i that's dope so why do it again the next year so the first year was you know, controlled chaos or controlled might not even be the right word. It's just like, I'm controlled. A- <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell no. controlled. Yeah. I, I have like, I'm very much like, let's fucking go for it. Send it like Send no it. plan or not. That's like, how you play it too. Yeah, by the yeah. way, I see yeah. it. Yeah. Let's get let's a fucking go. Let's try to get a plan, but let's just fucking go. Well, it's simple. But just th- get people together, play music. And party. Mm-hmm. Pretty yeah. easy recipe. It is simple. It's a great recipe. You just have to have people that are willing to participate in it. Yeah. Which yeah. is and no shortage of that. Mm-mm. In that first year, too, it's like, although it was under, I think it was like under 100 people at the Dugan Falls house. I right? think it was more than that. I was like 101, 102. 102 people. <laughs> <laughs> like, even that much more. You know what I mean? Like going from seeing nobody to that. Yeah. And, be, and then you have that thought in your mind. It gets brewing and like right after the fest you're burnt out but all you can think about is that next year like how do we bump it up how do we do something a little well, bit well we more? had doubts that we we're gonna do it again too yeah some of us did not want to do it yeah. i'm not gonna name name names <laughs> well so collectively some all of us, of us burnt out. <laughs> <laughs> well i guess my so my point was like so that's my kind of role in it or, or like that's my nature is to do that and then chris is right. sort of end of the spectrum of very good at like nitty gritty stuff. He's also an incredible graphic designer. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that can't be understated. Like we've Mojo Vazis has cool graphics and posters. I will have oh, to yeah. and like, agree to that. So and good no job. AI, Seriously. That that, that bound that we needed that. We needed, you know, you have to have both both energies yeah. to make it like a, a, a good thing, I think. Wow. What do you feel about that, Chris? How do you feel like what, your your end of well, that? I think I wanted to grow it and be able to put you know cooler and cooler names it's like i like when i'm getting the lineup and we're finalizing that whole thing and like reaching out to bands getting yeses and nos like when we send those like hail mary emails to like so and so like the magic beans was sort of like a 
you know, maybe, you yeah. know, that might be a, a really cool thing. And then I started getting excited. I was like, I get to put the magic beans on a poster. That's pretty yes. cool. That's fucking um, rad. So you that's get to put that. Bodie Mojo on a poster. That's true too. <laughs> I mean, all the, all, like You're I said, check, all the Harrison. bands, all the names, um, but those ones that aren't from the Northwest and like, you know, in a way we have this scene that like people are just grandfathered in and we have this yeah. like growing thing. Um, there's only a few events like it in the Northwest. So it's like of those two, of those few bands, like who else is new? Who else is out there? What band the region? Awesome. besides the beans? What, um, what are you most looking forward to seeing? You guys. Oh, 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 oh. Road. That was yeah. my favorite part. Oh, oh you it, guys. It, it, and when you guys did sounds, I mean like all like all the festival, like everything you guys do for like the whole live podcast thing. It's it's not something you see at every festival. No. You know? It's well, it's intimate you. and Thanks, it's friendly. Man. Oh yeah. I appreciate that. We yeah. we really put a lot of thought into it, especially last year's. You know, we couldn't figure out what we were gonna do and how we're gonna first of all, we want to do something unique. We want to do something unique for all of our sakes. Cause we, this is an opportunity for all of us to have a focused 40 minutes or whatever, you know? Yeah. So let's do something dope with everybody. Like how, depending on what, when we're scheduled, how are they going to feel like if it's first thing morning, they're not going to want to do all this crazy stuff, but they're more likely to listen. So let's do like a story time or something. Right. Then it was like, well, like, that was a huge oh, yeah, event, I remember that. right? Like, well, then last year with the or not, la what rhythms ground? That was, was last year. Gosh, last <laughs> yeah, not last year. What timing? We? But like, then we we're like, there's something special with the going on with the land, and like ever. So, and then just this incorporation this year, I've really been thinking about it too. I know, I know what we're doing. Oh, look, Aaron, we're doing Aaron. um. <clears throat> Morning butthole sun charging. Yes. And then naked. Yes. And naked wait, wait, Harry yeah. wait, wait. We're going to get it. We're going to get it. I thought that was on the back. table. I didn't know that was. Yeah. The what I was in the road this year. Quick I question. Remember. What? Have you guys sunned your butthole before? Never. No. Never. No. Have you? Possibly, yes. Possibly As on 100%. accident. 100%. Literally. Yes. So tell me. Tell Harrison. Me. Yeah, let's hear about, about it. Harrison your, is in our backyard anytime. I will sun in the backyard. You, you look outside the kitchen window and you're seeing God and that, you know, uh, yeah. it's the face it's, of God. Is it real? It's his third eye. It's not about Fourth whether eye. it's real or not. To me, it's, you know, it's the place where the sun don't shine. Is it, right. That's what people call it. Yeah. Right. So shine some light on it. Well, okay. What's the worst that could happen besides a sunburn? Know, a sunburn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you do Ow, it. Yeah. You Ouch. do it carefully. Be I got careful. you. Sunscreen. Yeah. And I sunscreen. Oh, no. no. do it quickly. I can't say I've noticed any major shifts in my life or anything, but things are going pretty good. I, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> please don't. Please, this, okay. Don't how long? Take, wait, wait, wait. Hey, wait. don't take this the wrong way. I have to ask though, because they kind of go together. Are you drinking pee too? No. Okay. No. Just no, got to ask. No. Because those two things kind of somehow. That's in the my thing head. I'm, I'm on the fence about. Maybe uh, before I go, I'll try it. We've got friends right. that do it. I mean, you got to be I curious. Don't know, I don't know if she still does it, but she, it was a, a really. How long was this? Is this practice been happening? The butthole oh, probably, not the pee drink. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because that doesn't happen. Yeah. That yeah. doesn't happen. I don't drink pee. Okay. <laughs> yet. Um, probably like a year. That's, That's awesome. That, okay. But I've only done it like a handful of times. Okay. So in one so. year, a handful of times, you don't yeah. know something dramatic, but you, do you enjoy it? Oh yeah. It feels great. Okee, okay, so that's one that's an effect. Enjoyment. That's one that's, effect. There it is. No, no, that's no, a wait. positive effect. Enjoyment, no, I, I, absolutely. I have a technical question. <laughs> How do you go about the like like you're laying on your stomach, butt up in the air, you're no. like oh, you stand, a you can do that. forward, forward fold. fold. There's actually a technique, like, Apple. Is there a It's a forward I mean, fold, I thought. I mean, you can do um, you know, on your back and you grab your toes. Like, you know, baby. Grab your toes, baby child's pose. Yeah. Um no, no, I've done doggy. Happy baby. Okay. Doggy right. style. Okay. All right. Um and then do, you, do, you have to, do you have to mind the Chris taint? Is over yes, here cracking of course, up. dude. <laughs> Jesus. This I is mean, interesting. This is very supposed interesting. We're talking about Mojo Family Fest. We, we are. We're, we're going to get, well, well, there's a lot of subjects. <laughs> Maybe they'll be like a. We're going to get an all new following on this podcast. Yes, hey, we started with solar flares and stuff. Yeah, we're moving in. Uh, yeah, there's well, a lot of stuff. Hey, well, what would happen if you did this during the solar flare? I would not recommend that. No. <laughs> Something could that's happen. A, that's I feel like that's, that's dangerous. Or could that's you get dangerous. some like uh, like amazing emergency energy? I know how to segue us out of this. Yeah, please I do. totally do. <laughs> I know how to do it. We're in a deep we're deep in a jam. Yeah, we're no, I, I, can, I can get us back. back how do we get the back set. to the the tonic? So, so all of these like extra things that happen at festivals, you know, 
what um what do you got planned for this year they get food and vendors and all that kind of stuff we got some secret how stuff. I, did that? You like got, that? I love that. We got some secret stuff that secrets. I don't think we can stuff. that we can talk about, stuff. but it's going to be fun. We're okay. going to have some fun. Um, we got some cool, cool props and and visual oh. additions. We're pondering, okay. pondering yeah. a lot of ideas. For those of you that weren't here last year, on the was it the last night with the me- okay, yeah, yep. meatball. So on the last summer. night, we were at uh, at Rhythms Ground last year for this, and there's a big hill to the right of the stage if you're facing the stage. And like a big hill. And uh, as the music's playing, a giant fucking meatball, like 12 <laughs> feet high, maybe? 12, 12 feet. 12 yeah, feet. That exactly. Was so yeah. funny. Came rolling down the hill. Yeah. Yeah. That was cool. Um, <laughs> it was something that, I don't know how the idea came about, but it, we just started kind of talking about a meatball summer. And that's where the idea started. We thought there was a funny pairing of words. And then that's what came out of it. Um, it came out of the abyss. You just started saying it one uh, week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really? Uh, There's no like baby, baby boy. Uh, no, baby boy, our LD. Oh, yeah. Okay. He's not with us uh, right now. Jesus oh, Christ. he's okay? <laughs> he's fine. He's okay, fine. okay. okay. <laughs> Jesus, you scared me. Oh, I know. <laughs> he's no longer with But yeah, us. he just started saying it's a meatball summer and it stuck. We didn't know what it meant. I think we do now. What does it mean? <laughs> Is that part you know, of if secret? you have to ask, you'll never know. So you'll never know. I mean, it is pretty. I think Mel and I were talking about this before, but I like the 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 balance between like very like sacred spiritual because that's a big element at just in the Portland in general. There's a lot of like people super hippie, like super out there. I love that. I love it most in combination of when you get reminded that like you can't take things too seriously. So that that part I like. To, um, that is right. Well, what you just described right there is the ethos of the pranksters. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. A thousand right. percent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, no, one, one thing it added for me, cause I loved being a part of that. Cause it was like a big secret. It was hidden up by the house at the very top of Rhythms Ground. Oh, the meatball. Okay. And we yeah. have to say a, a shout out to Simon, Darla, Simon Audrey, and Jason. Out Simon and, 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 push that, and then, push that down then I got brought into it because I actually, not accident, I came walking up there and I saw it. So then I yeah. became, and then I got recruited. But what it felt like to me was like, like it made it feel like summer camp. Yeah, like 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 a big like like the last day of summer camp, and you do a big thing, and it didn't need to make sense. It was all just about fun, and the looks on the people's faces when that went down, even your when you yeah. saw it come to fruition, <laughs> and here comes this, and it was perfect. I think that was the mid, way it came down and bounced. Mid song, too, yeah, right? mid song, yeah, yeah. love yeah, and Everybody's just like, what the hell, and then just laughing and knocking that thing around. It was. It was a spectacle. It was, it was a pretty wild. This is kind of a cool story. We, we got some help from other sources in that moment. And this is something I'll never forget. So, like, so we plan this meatball thing. We order a giant beach ball off Amazon. We don't even open the package till we get up. We were going to spray paint it red. And first of all, I was like, what color is the meatball? Is it red or brown? It's, it's round. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a mixture. Ochre. so we were like that took us a while to figure out but then um so we had all this paint we bring it up to the area we're gonna blow it up we're gonna roll it down the hill we open it up and it's there's a giant rip in it so we're like ah fuck like oh, we've been telling people it's a meatball summer, summer. <laughs> people are gonna no one's gonna know what oh, and we're all this about. paint we had six cans of like different colored spray paint i was like this is not gonna cover yeah. a 12 foot <laughs> Beach ball. It was, not, so it was a fucking red and yellow and blue beach ball. And then Audrey was just like, you know what? Pretend they're kindergartners. Like, tell them it's a meatball. They're going to believe it. I'm like, nah, I don't know. Like, that's not a <laughs> that's meatball. Like beach ball it's not a meatball. Yeah. So I was, we were like, we're fucked. You know, this is toast. So we're like, well, let's just roll it out. We'll make it happen. So we throw it on this tarp and we don't want it to pop. So we throw the tarp over this meatball. It's a brown tarp. And it's a meatball. All of a sudden, yeah, all of a it's sudden became a, a meatball. perfect oh. meatball, and uh, that was pretty cool. And then we taped it up and threw it down. I think that's the like one of the coolest things is when it's an accident like that. Yeah, it like, wanted oh, it that. wanted to be right. a meatball. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out Ben and Tiff for helping out with that one. You know, it, Apple. I think you hit on something though, like the um, that feeling of being at Mojo Fest, like 
more than anywhere else feels like summer camp when yeah. you, you said that like i never got to do that as a kid like jewish summer camp was a thing that i wasn't part of for whatever reason and lots of friends did it and that kind of sucks like I know people that still have friends from going to camp when they were 12 years old or whatever. But then now being able to go to something like this where you get to see your favorite bands, the best music in the Pacific Northwest, and then... And beyond. And be with... Yeah, and beyond. And be with all of your friends and family. That's not every day. And it does feel like that weekend of summer camp And it's not too big to where um, you're lost in the sauce. Like you can be with this thing. Like if you're one, one of those people that is nervous about going to a big festival or just, this is a perfect size festival. Think that it's missing like the, the real like spiritual element or whatever. This is the one to go to because it's big enough to feel like something's happening it's small enough to where you're not going to get overwhelmed and like jack just said there's a a healthy balance of ritual and fun yeah and i was going to say the coolest stories you hear is like when although everyone does know each other when they get there the next year they're like oh we met at mojo fest the year mm-hmm. before or like there are still mm-hmm. people and the fact that they can like get to know each other and like share that experience they can share everyone after that it's really yeah. cool. What besides the money, right? What's the hardest part? What um, money? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, <laughs> finding it. where to go. That's the hard exactly. Part. Besides that part the of the lack it, thereof, the, the finding it, the <laughs> uh, cleaning up and leaving. Yeah. Oh. Really? That's, that's the yeah. hardest part. That's the hardest part. Yeah. Oh, God. wow. Leaving. Yeah. What? End it. Ending it. Yeah. Yo, Stop shout outs wait. to whoever left a cooler full of raw meat. <laughs> The end of last year. Oh, yeah, that's a nice, oh. nice surprise. Oh, I was fascinating. Shout out. Ew. Not in Biological a good way. level. Oh. oh, yeah. Last year was me and Mike cleaning up. Uh, we were the uh, trash crew. First one's in, last one's out. Yep. And, and uh, somebody dang. left an entire cooler filled with raw meat. Yep. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. Like two I mean, it wasn't two coolers coolers we got to it. I heard it wasn't a good yeah. cooler, too. It was just like a like a leather cooler. Yeah, no, nothing. Something. A leather cooler. <laughs> it would have lasted like 12 itself. hours. Yeah. It wasn't Ooh. a Yeti. It was. Yeah, if it was Shout a Yeti, maybe it would have been still good, you know? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> On this, uh, that's bizarre. <laughs> that is weird. Like, okay. first of all, cool you brought an entire meat. cooler. Also, you yeah. know, pack in, pack out. Yeah, let's there, let's take a minute to talk it. about that because... Raw meat is not a festival thing, dude. <laughs> bring Thank your you. fucking chips, bring your veggies and your hummus. And like, how are... Come on, let's be real. What were you going to say? That's crazy. Though? Well, we went to we went to Wondergrass and we'll talk about it on our wrap up. But one thing that came out of that was festival etiquette. I said, you know what? We've been to enough festivals. We're going to have to be like the mom and dad and the <laughs> uncle and like say what's right at a festival and what's not right. Because some people don't have good manners and I don't think that they mean to not have good manners. I'm not no saying that's the case. What I think is, is that you kind of get wrapped up into your own little group or in your own trip or you're feeling like whatever. And then you don't have consideration oh, for what's uh, happening ar- ar- around you. And it's always been happening around you and you just step up there and now you're making a whole scene and you had no consideration for the people around you. And that's in a lot of instances. Um, it's fine. Like, of course we'll say, sorry, there's no hard feelings, but you need to know what you're doing and you need to know the impact that you have on the people around you when we're in these open environments awareness Awareness. yes and and it's just about again i think it's just about awareness and etiquette those are the two best words i can say being aware of who's around you and and how loud you are or how anything you are um, are you stepping on someone's foot for the last 15 minutes and you just didn't do anything (laughs) about it like that those are things that for real for real happen and like it can like make somebody's festival experience like from a zero to a thousand it or the happened. other way around it even happened at the sphere <laughs> yes a couple i almost got yeah. in a fight yeah this guy almost got into a freaking fight you almost right. got in a fight with a fish fan come on yeah. <laughs> it happens you yeah. know i don't yeah. believe it were you gonna say something chris yes. throw down in the sphere well yeah i was gonna say uh harrison said the hardest part was cleaning up and i think that's the most daunting or like scary thing like going into each year is like how are we gonna pull together enough people to you know 
make this fun, make sure people aren't like working the whole time and still able to like enjoy music. But we have, you know, a crew of people who care about what we're doing and like want to be there. And we're, we don't want like forcing anybody to do anything they don't want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, like if you don't like raw meat, we're not going <laughs> to make you pick up raw meat. Um, we got a, just kind this of year's different. We yeah. have we finally have a crew with designated specific roles, yeah. and Ooh. we they work their asses off. So like our production manager is Nelson Unsworth from Actualize Fest. So we have handed over. We are in the actively in the process of handing over production to him. Previously, we threw it together as a band, and I realized last year that does not work. You can't be the headlining band and then put on the whole festival. I think you realized that illogical at Wariki too. I did. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you kept on realizing year yeah. after year. It's an uh, interesting realization. <laughs> playing a yeah, set. Maybe I'll learn the, next year. Playing a set with a giant meatball in the back of your mind. Like, is it going to, is it going <laughs> to yeah. hold out? That's not going to, but we have, we have 50 volunteers. This Damn. Year. 50. We have Dang. a volunteer coordinator and then we have six to eight crew leads under that. And they all wow. have people. So there is a, um, it, it has structure, which a pyramid. is really cool. And, you know, yeah. Yeah. It's a, yeah tell me more about this pyramid. <laughs> and vendors, too. Well, I mean, we have. It's more of a reverse funnel. Yeah. Yeah. If you, will. you know, I'm, I'm proud of you because that's what was needed um, last year. So yeah. It was a new venue. It was like, a, it's, it's, there's so many news that it's hard to kind of. Um, create something out of something like you just got the plans you just got everything now make a plan Ooh, that's that's hard to do so that's more of like a correction of things you know as you see you go right but yeah. with that the improvement of a structured um job base what are people actually doing when are they actually working and how sober do they have to be in all of these, a lot of things, you know what I mean? Like what, and, and and if that could have happened, I think it would have from maybe like a 98 to 102, you know what I mean? That's the, that's part of the thing with doing, um, anything, anything you don't know. You don't fucking know. That's what I was was saying. You you have no idea, but like, that's a background thing that you can take with you everywhere. A structured, um, like idea of, job description hours and who's responsible what were you going to say about the vendors oh i was going to say uh yeah like like volunteers vendors like wrangling all those people with just you know four or five of us um it's a lot and in splitting up those tasks and putting trust in people who like have the same like love for this trust even if they've never done it before like they have the same love and they have the same wants and goals that you do Right. Without prompting, you know, we've had a lot of people come up to us and ask how they can get involved. And that's a really cool thing, too. It's so like, if somebody's listening great. and they want to volunteer, what do they do? Or do you have your or limit? Is it, or like, is that or is closed? That, I think we're still we, looking for, uh, for might, a little bit more. We could have a, we can have a few more. Go yeah. ahead and fill out a form because people a also form. volunteers, um, you know, they wait lists happen. So we can go to our website. There's a vendor application on there. Bodimojo.com. Bodimojo.com. Yep, okay. You'll see Mojo Family Fest, vendor application, volunteer application. That will go to Alex Big Bird, our volunteer coordinator. And then Braden Jasper from JG uh, Wire Jewelry yes. is our vendor coordinator. Like, what a better guy than what that. That, dude, that dude's been to so many festivals. Oh and I was gosh. just like, Take it, dude. Like wow. pick the he knows vendors. Exactly what to do. Pick oh, the vendors. So make capable. it different. How many like, do we need? We don't want to. We don't want to saturate no. it. So you have thirty vendors. Obviously, that's really important to us. Like, if you're paying money to vend, like we want to make it worth it. So, so he's got all that. It's really, really cool. Wow. Um, our baby boy, our lighting director, our our lights have up to like tenfold um, this year. It's gonna be fucking sick. We got Mitch Melheim from the get down running lights. Oh, we're working shit. with um, Jason who set up the lights for the get down. Um, and then, so we have like very, very professional people providing the backbone for, for the production, which is, which is great. Wow. Yeah. So it seems like everything's leveled up. It's it. You're yeah. learning, oh, yeah. you're learning every year. You're taking a little bit of what you learned from the year before and applying it to the next. And I mean, that's, that's all you could do. You can't ask for more than that. And and like we were saying, when you start doing something, man, you don't fucking know what you mm-hmm. do not know. There, you don't even know what questions to ask about stuff. You just have to start kind of doing it. And having a, a somebody to run production for you, Jack, has that made it easier for you? 
Yeah, dude. I mean, last year, um, I, I took on a lot. It, it kind of broke me and I was like, um, you know, we all work really hard and that's like, again, what I'm saying is like, you gotta, you gotta have trust into, cause it was just, but the Bodhi Mojo, like that's, we've been like having creative control and we still want to have that creative control, but to put trust into someone, um, taking and running, running with something is something I'm, I'm trying to learn too. And I'm realizing that part of, part of that is me holding, holding it back from letting go. Because if, if you're able to let go and trust someone, you know, that's a two way street. So part of it is like, maybe I was not allowing that to happen in myself and other people, you know what I'm saying? Learning to delegate is just as important of a skill as anything else. You know, like if you, when you're helping people utilize their best skills and you can now focus on your literal talent like yeah like music like we yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah and we're like i don't know bodie most is a different type of band man we like we love playing shows and oh, we so. love throwing events and we're i think we're taking an alternative path here and we I, we try to like remind ourselves like we're we don't have to follow any rules of what anybody expects of us of like okay you got to do this tour like we go at our own pace and and we're making it work we like it taking risks <laughs> Take <them. laughs> well, that, that's part of what I think that, that after you say that that's part of what makes it feel different too it's not a cookie cutter of something else that's been done you're yeah. just you're doing your own thing and that that's that's comfortable <laughs> yeah well I I mean if you follow some recipe f- f- we'll just say for a festival then you if you bake that cake the way everybody else did, you're going to get the same fucking thing. The music might be different, but the vibe and all that, and, it feels and it's sterile. going to be, And it's going to make you have expectations of what it should be instead of just letting it be more organic and what happens, happens. But I, I know what you're talking about, Jack. Like, delegating is fucking hard, mm-hmm. especially when the thing that you're doing is coming from your soul and then giving control of part of that thing over to somebody else is like what you have to do things like that in order to grow uncomfortable things yeah and to make it more of you know we talk about community that's really you have to that is the involving the community everybody Mm -hmm. wants a everybody wants to be involved and i feel like you can really get that at mojo family fest there's like i said there's little separation between like the roles there and it's like the more you get involved the more you get out of it is one thing i've realized at a festival like there's like a, you, car, there's a mean? karmic thing there. I feel like in maybe anything in life, like the more work you put in, there's a reciprocal kind of reward. That's just like a theory I, I have. And so like to allow everybody to do that, um, fans and ticket goers and stuff is, um, I just think there's something there to it. There well, is. yeah. Yeah. I was going to say it also kind of blurs the lines between artist and patron. Mm-hmm. where you go to a lot of festivals and you go watch a 45 minute hour long set, whatever it is. And then you never see the band again. But I, I feel like in the past couple of years, it's just been like, you know, meandering through the woods, playing like little jam circles. And like, there's no real line between the performers and the guests. It's, it's all of, community. Yeah. Yeah. That, and if you're, if you're traveling in like, you know, the beans or whoever who's not from the Pacific Northwest, it's like, yeah, you have that, that ability to meet new people and, and kind of expand yeah. and feel open and not feel obligated to just hustle down to the green room after your set and disappear and hide. Night. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's something that's part of the, um, especially up here in Pacific Northwest that there really is no separation between the fans and the bands. You, you guys are at shows with us, dancing, hanging out. When Even when you play, like, you guys are up there on the stage and then out in the crowd watching the next band if you're not headlining. Like, that, it, coming from the 80s and 90s, that was not a fucking thing, man. Like, you go see a band and they're on the stage and then they're gone. And that's just the end of it. And even, like, I, I, I'm thinking back to, like, going and seeing like um, black flag or the misfits or something in a small club in Vegas, even then you weren't seeing that, like they were gone the second the show was over. And I think that gives people an opportunity to connect with you guys as human beings. And then when they see you play, it's better. It makes it better for us, you know? Oh yeah. 
Who else well, we got at this festival? What bands are playing? Well, we got uh, Yak Attack, Woo. Magic Beans, of course, uh, Sponge, our homies, yeah, yeah. Family Mystic, Flying Caravan, uh, Bodhi Moho. <laughs> Bodhi. I, How do you say I always, hey. I always trip up on that one. Yeah. <laughs> You're uh, going to have to learn to get it right, Harrison. Uh, but back on what you were just talking about, I think part of that, us like, you know, hanging out with the, with the audience yeah, and kind of networking or just, mm. you know, hanging out It's cause we're not, you know, we're not that big yet. You know, if we were like as popular as fish, we probably would not, Mm-mm. you'd get swamped if you started hanging out yep. in the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> like there's a level of danger yes. that comes with that. But, yeah. But you know, we're, we're more part of the community than we are just a band, you know, even bands like, um, cause I get that. Like not wanting to totally be surrounded. I, 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 can yeah. you imagine being well, that, Trey and trying to walk yeah. through and be crazy? And that would be in a, in a manner, be uh. disrespectful to the band on stage. Cause all of a sudden half the crowd's like Trey yeah. and they're up there playing right. and it's like, fuck, I but wanted even, to come watch. Even like at Northwest string summit bands, like green sky, bluegrass, Holly bowling, pigeons playing ping pong. Like, they're out hanging out. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And and that just is. I, I think it's really dependent on the environment. For it, sure. It really yeah. is like how s- safe it is. You know, maybe in New York with a huge, you know, like amount of people, you wouldn't be as safe in a festival. But like in a small Portland one. Yeah. I think what Harris through. is trying to say is that after we hit. 2,500 people, you'll never see us again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair. <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for clearing it up, dude. <laughs> we're, we're we're that's like, the number, Harrison. 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 He's like, what? Oh, my I'll gosh. Be, I'll get off the stage, and then I'll go sun my butthole. <laughs> and, uh, and drink some pee. No, Harrison doesn't drink pee. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> tell, tell me a little bit more about Red Mud Ranch. Red Mud Ranch is really cool. Read by some old fam, this old deadhead, it's the fucking man, um, James King, who also does production for our festival. Mm-hmm. He doesn't, he lives at the ranch sometimes. The ranch is run by this old man named Roger, just like a real straight shooter. Um, classic. I mean, it's kind of out in, you know, Oregon City is, you get out of Portland, you get into different, different areas. Yeah. He just wants someone to use his venue. He wants someone to have fun, be safe. Um, we have a lot of freedom there. Um, and it's, it's really cool. The, oh man, it's really like a spectacular, it wants, wants to have a festival there and there have been other events there, but you drive in, there's 60 acres up top of cut grass camping that you can see a sunset. You can see Mount hood from up there. And wow. then, so we'll have car camping up top and we have a shuttle service. There's a little hill. It's probably we have like, shuttle service. We got a little here. Service. What? <laughs> I, that perked my ears right up. Yeah. So the shuttle will take you up from car camping or family camp down 24 hours. Um, the hill's pretty steep. So, you know, if, uh, if you want to camp down below, you can totally do that for ADA. Once you get down acoustically, it's wild. It's a big bowl. Similar, like Rhythms Ground has this too. It's, you're in a bowl. You remember at Rhythms Ground how you could walk around anywhere and here it felt like the band was like 10 feet Sent behind you? next to you yeah yes. wasn't that wild it was yeah. wild crazy that it's, was really it's like wild. that and i think you only get that with like that acoustic uh kind of like natural bowl amphitheater wow um stage is beautiful we're gonna the grass is really long there but we're cutting all the grass it's gonna be nice and beautiful grass and then there's this river a uh, little <laughs> i gotta a cr- a i think i gotta clear this yeah up. you should clear this up because i really i was like is it like a spiral <laughs> and it just keeps, go- I don't understand. I got I, I to gotta explain physics to Aaron real quick. Yeah. Right. Well, it's a river, so, river theory. River theory. <laughs> so I made, I, got, I made a joke cause we went on live and we were talking about the, the red mud ranch. So I made a joke. I said, this river actually wraps around itself and eats its tail. <laughs> And you're not the only one who came up and asked me how that was possible. Yeah. I just want to be very clear. You said, it, you said it so straight faced, like it was like statistics. Yeah. Like this, this thing that you could just, you could float Confidence. all the way yeah. back to the beginning. Yeah. I was like, how the fuck it's an do you, infinity river. But I, yeah. I got to ask. Jack it's a lazy river. So we got to clear this up. I want to be on the record. 
Do not follow the river all the way down. It will not take you back to <laughs> the start. There will be ropes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll ropes we got a net. Go. We got a net to okay. get you. Do not pass. <laughs> but it's cool. I mean, like, you know, how often do you have that thing? And that's in the bowl. That You can, like, you float. listen to the music and, and put your feet in the river. Yep. 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 What? Tie don't the tube yep. And don't yep. dive it's into right. the... It's right. It's 200 feet from the creek. stage. Yeah, I heard you say okay. you could dive into you the don't river, dive too. Either. Don't dive either. Don't dive into the river. Go. We got to, you know, figure this out. But no, it's going to be like a good, like... 15, 20 minute float and it wraps around where the main stage is. Wow. Really? Yeah. And then we'll, so we have two stages. The um, main stage is in the field. Um, you got to make sure we're going to have lots of tents and shade structures, but bring your own shade. That's going to be important because the upper, okay, upper area is camping. So that's where you get, get that on there. Um, the side stage, we're trying to envision the side stage as like, it's never, I never want to feel lesser or bigger or lesser, just different and more, intimate so we got someone um doing liquid lights which will be projecting on the whole hill behind the side stage side stage lights are going to be amazing and that's all under a cover of trees and that's probably 50 feet from the river so that's where we're thinking of doing like any kind of spoken words where we're doing workshops and we'd love to have you guys play there yeah um and also the late night stage we're going to have some djs so you know kind of back and forth um we try not to have music going simultaneously um, but it's far enough away where I think we can make that happen. And so yeah. you, know, you said there's a lot, like a lot of freedom there and stuff. So I imagine with that bigger property, you don't really need to worry about like noise ordinance or anything. Are there much neighbors? Not or, really. I mean, okay. I think really. we, we do have a, we, we can't have bass pumping at 4am. Yeah. Um, but we're figuring that out. This is our first time there. And I mean, also it's our thing too. You don't have to have music 24 seven to have fun at a festival. I think yeah. about Oregon Country Fair, the lights shut off yeah. and everybody's running around and you can't even see their faces. Everyone's just like looking like you just see their soul. You're just little, little bubbles <laughs> yes, of light. Jack. And it's like, I fucking love that. You know, so you don't always have to have something going all the time. Right on for saying that. Yeah. You're right. Because just because it's a festival doesn't mean the only thing is about music. Like quiet pockets of like hanging out with your friends and like talking about the music. A and fucking like, puppet show. Yeah, puppet, okay. puppet shows. Show. Oh. That would be a good idea. You know, people... Who's going to do it? I mean... I'm just saying, there's... There, I might have a finger puppet or two or ten. <laughs> I might. There's <laughs> there's a million things you can do at a festival that you can't do otherwise because you're with all your people and you're safe and you're out somewhere and you're camping. And so you're absolutely right. Like, music doesn't Private have to be the time. only fucking thing. <laughs> you could do... Make giant paintings in in the dark. And see what you got in the morning. Like, I don't know. There's a million things you could do. I Sunrise, butthole. Yeah. 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 Don't just keep going back to that. Yeah, I, think that's, that's, I mean, you know, could, I think it'd be a good bonding experience. Sure. That could start off our set. <laughs> so, everybody. Anyway. <laughs> tall glass of- Dang it. It's going to be going to be weird. Um, you know, you were talking about festival. Yeah, etiquette. I wanted to go. I, I want to go around yeah. the circle. Let's start with. We're going to make our what? How, let's how start many with of Harrison, us is there? And then we'll go all, all right, Actually, yeah, I'm glad. Nine. So, are you familiar with the concept of MOOP? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Matter, Matter out, out of, of place. place. It's just, you know, the, the venue, Red Mud Ranch, or if it's Rhythm Grounds or Camp Oriki, that is the, it's, you know, it's nature. It's this beautiful Sacred place. Space. Anything that is there that you bring in does not belong there, should not be there when you leave. Oh, shit. Anything. Yeah, absolutely true. And being, you know, just being careful about that, you know, bring, bring your own personal trash bag or whatever, you know, try to leave as little behind as possible. I mean, it's simple. Pack in, pack out. Yeah. Leave no two, trace. two steps. Pack in, pack out. I Yet like people still get lost. Mess that up leave somehow. coolers full of rotten meat. Everyone yeah. needs yeah. reminders. Or like camping chairs and, you know. Broken or water not. Water bottles. Dude, we've seen it at the gorge just like. A pile of unused shit laying by the dumpster. Right. Like, what the does fuck not need to happen. are you doing, man? You brought it here. Yeah. Bring it home. Yeah. Simple. I love that. All right. All right. What do we got, Mike? You're up. Uh, <clears throat> this one's fairly petty, and I'm aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, just as important as all the other. It's important so to you. It's important. Of to course, us. all the common sense stuff of if you're going to bring a speaker into your campsite, you know, you keep it at a reasonable volume, all that sort of thing. But also. If you got a playlist running, you got to put at least 50 songs on that thing. 
I need rotation. <laughs> I swear yes. to that's God. Yeah. Yeah. The Stop same, repeating music. I took a I took a siesta at this one fest this one time, and I, same five songs in a row. It's it's that one with that Betty sample. It's the one with the uh, that one slightly stupid song, like the one just oh, over, yeah, like five one. songs in a row. I swear to God, over Ready and over. Ready to shoot over, yourself about four hours straight. Yeah, okay. that's not petty. That's, that's not I petty. Completely <laughs> agree with that. That yeah. Jack? That's ear pollution. Uh, let's see. I say keep your fucking hands to yourself. Ooh. Oh. I, mean, I hate to be oh, yeah. kind of dark with that, but like just keep your fucking hands to yourself. Um, yeah, we got, I mean, we got a lot of ages at this festival and every, we want everybody to be there and we want everybody to feel safe. It's not the time to go and like, you know, put all your shit on the line forward, you know, just be, be very, it's, that goes back to like Mel's awareness. It's like all this stuff I think comes down to awareness, but like really, really be aware of that. It's like, you know, it's super common and uh, keep your fucking hands to yourself. Yeah, I like that. I, I but like also, that. you know, go talk to people and co- don't let that hold you, you back from nice. connecting, connect with people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just real quick before we move on, there's security and um, medical at. at- yep. Okay. So we got for um, security, we have um, Oregon Country Fair folks oh. coming and running security. Perfect. They've been doing it there for a long time. It's 24 hours. They're always on walkie. Um, medical team and security work together so they'll be able to communicate for medical we have um, two ER nurses and a naturopathic doctor that are on 24-7 that's incredible killing it that's All right. beautiful yep. I love that All right. good job so I would I, say uh, pack more than you need there's a lot of folks who come or like who can go to a <gasps> festival and come with only half of what they need yep. expecting for other people to fill the gaps Ooh. sparkle um, ponies but but it makes it that much better because those people who do come and bring the first aid kits and they're they're out you know beside, aside from the medical tent they're like patching up little scrapes and scratches or you know offering you a fresh bottle of water or whatever it is um, bring more than you think you need because mm-hmm. someone might yeah, yeah. That's, you know that's a sweet thought you're right Chris because people are like that like you know what if you're away from your camp you drop your water bottle. You're freaking so thirsty. You have, you have it, but you don't have it with you. We will have water too. Somebody just, not, just <laughs> don't bring too much raw meat. Yeah, no Harrison, raw meat. that can't be underscored raw enough. Meat, raw meat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, um, I think everything I was going to say has been said mostly, but, uh, I believe that sleep is sacred. Oh, and so I mean, absolutely. Hell yeah, brother. When possible, uh, let people have it. Ooh, yeah, I, I, I'm going to add something to your sleep is sacred thing. If you've never been to a festival before or you've been a few times and you didn't do this, bring earplugs. Yes. Like, yep. yeah, yeah. seriously, bring earplugs. Autonomy. And you can put them in at night and then the whole world isn't pissing you off when yeah. you're trying mm-hmm. to fall asleep. Because, earplugs, check this out, in a festival... We're there to party and have fun and stay up all night as much as we can. Some people really want to do that. They never get to do that. That's why they come outside of their house and go into a festival because they want to do that. And that's cool. But again, that comes back to what I said earlier. Be aware of your surroundings. Yeah, That's it. You can, you can still have fun and be like, ah, and like reel yourself in. You know what I mean? Like, oh man, I was just being a really freaking loud ass. Let me stop stomping around. Let yeah, me, there might be people. Yeah, sleeping. let me oh, yeah. turn down and my radio. All respect to people who stay up all night. Right. I know what you were I'm talking about. You, Owen. I'm just, yeah. I'm, I'm just being the so reminder. They keep of, the festival going. Yeah, do. man. Yeah, it's for them. Because I, <laughs> I want to speak about that. I've, I've done that before. I, uh, I don't like rules. I don't believe in a lot of rules. I want to also <laughs> say, I know we've just put out a lot of things. No, this is I our etiquette. This is festival yeah. etiquette, not right, rules. Right. Right. I mean, I don't. <laughs> I truly don't believe there is like you can't classify all these things as like always good or always bad. Things are like very muddy. So like, yes, I I want you to to feel free when you come to the festival. Um, You know, it's like super important, but also, yeah, I I don't know. I just want to say that it's It's like, I really don't think there's like rules right or wrong. Like obviously there are things, but um, I like the freedom of it. I think that's why people come is to be free. Uh, So I can, I can boil this down seriously. Like, it's called having consideration. Yeah. You just yep. be considerate of the people around and you don't be a dick. and don't be a dick. <laughs> also man. consider like, where you're camping. Totally. If you're camped next to the main stage, uh, don't expect to get the best degree. Of or sleep. you, yeah, yeah, yeah you, you, you get upset. You well, start to set up. That your, goes back to the consideration. You start to yeah. set up your <laughs> spot and the camp next to you has like 
six handles of whiskey, you're so probably not flag. getting sleep. <laughs> that that's when the that's the that's the camp that has the four a.m. Right. karaoke that starts exactly. yeah, where everybody thinks they can sing really snake good farm. on yeah. tequila. Snake yeah. farm, yeah. and that's that's one thing we learned from last year that we didn't really we didn't really plan for. Um, it kind of worked out, but like this year with the family camping and ADA, like making it accessible for everybody. Yeah, and you kind of after a couple of years of doing this, you see where everyone falls. You know, you see yes. like the need for like every type of of camper and festival goer. Mel, so planning for that's a big thing. Mel, what's your etiquette guideline suggestion? Um, if you see something in front of you that you know goes in the trash, just pick it up and throw it away. Yep. I just have a such one. a if every single person did this, Aaron says this all the time about No Simple Road. If everybody that listened to No Simple Road gave a dollar, we wouldn't have to Never work. Have to work again. <laughs> all right, Wikipedia. No right. <laughs> if everybody just picked up something that was at on the floor every time they walked by, not like and and just threw it in the trash, then at the end of the festival, there would be nothing on the floor. Only what you literally have around you. Yeah. And you would know what was yours. We'd all be levitating. And so it's like elevating the festival experience to it's not your fault or your um, your um, responsibility. responsibility, but it's also you're coming here to share this with us and nothing was here when you got here and you should leave it that way. Pack it in, pack it out. That, pack that, it in, pack it out. That's a, just to back that. That's like right? the thing I've always said, like, like people that like to point out messes. And how dirty something is. It's a lot easier to just clean it. Just go pick it up. Go to man. the drama. Of, but did you see this over here, man? We need to address. It's like just, <laughs> just, just, just do it, just it. I and like then to it's complain done. more. Than yeah, well, yeah. I like to wipe the toilet down, even in porta potties. When I'm done, I just always wipe it down. <laughs> wow, I do do that. That's so whoever comes duty. in after me, unreal. Yeah, whoever hero. comes in after me is. Lucky. So that, there's a, there's a pointer right there. If you see Mel coming out of porta <laughs> potty, you know, that's set. the one. For you. <laughs> yeah. like, you might still have to hold your nose because it's disgusting uh, yeah, in there. But yeah. like you know, at least it'll be clean like that. Okay. That's 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 it. That's one part of the festival. Because wait a minute, it's, like, it's the awful. it's the community aspect. I think we all love and thrive of, and like the freedom in that. Like oh, we're not in some corporate world. We have to like stop at the red light. Like no, we all we can stay up at three in the morning. We can jam with our friends we can dress however we want but then it's kind of like the taking care of the community part it's like making sure we don't get sick making sure no one gets hurt making sure nobody gets you know in That's trouble community yeah and so like it's what you said Aaron Consideration, and that that's not in a specific thing. It's not about music. It's not about food, leaving food. It's just like a way of life. Being considerate mm -hmm. is a way of life. It and like, we just all need reminders of it. And that's just like turning the music down or taking your raw meat with you or <laughs> being, <laughs> but you no, know, like these are all things that can fall under that guideline of being considerate of others. Yeah, true. You yeah. know? Um, I, I, I just, I just gonna say, I just had a flash in my head, which everybody will know. Shout out to Love from Family Mystic. When you said we could, you could dress as much as you want, or you could undress as much as oh, you yeah. want <laughs> around people and have fun. Or undress. Hell yeah, I, like I agree. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. The, mine is is something that has happened a few times recently, and um, like if the show is going, <laughs> and you're there's people dancing on the dance floor. Or whatever, and you and your friends just got there. Don't go shove your way into the crowd and just post up in front of somebody. That's really rude. It's it, <laughs> man. You realized at the same time I did when Mel said the thing about the etiquette. Oh, we yeah. know exactly what she was talking oh, about. Oh man, it was a specific the, point it, for it all happened, three of us. Yeah. It happened to us at at a festival recently, and. There was some people that were super high and and whatever Un and good. unaware, good and unaware, yeah, yeah, but just like completely unaware that there was other people there, and but there there but was then, a group group then, of us up dancing and just shoved their way in and like made it uncomfortable for a twenty foot radius of people all looking at each other like what the fuck? Yeah, it was aggressive. Yeah, to, to the point I, I think I have not elbowed 
several people that hard in a very long time to make them aware of what they were doing because they're pushing up on you, stepping on your foot. There was an older couple that they just met. So I just started like throwing up. Throwing elbows. That's what you like close your eyes and you Throw just act the like most. them. Like you're not paying attention to anybody uh-huh. either. And then that's not the best way to handle no, it's it. Not. Turn the other but cheek. It, it worked. It they were all I didn't like, have room oh, to turn it. Yeah. They had to move because yeah. they're going to get an elbow. From yeah, Apple. man. Just, just be aware that, that there's other people there and they're having a good time just like you are. And if you can't get where you want to be, then you ain't supposed to be there. Yeah. That's where I'm. That was that was that that, that was one of the ones I was going to say. I was going to title Sorry, it. Don't, don't be a barger. Yeah. A barger. Don't be barging. No barging. No barging. A Mojo family. Yeah. Fest. That's it's a, that's, that's, bar- that's as bad I, as champ. And I get it. Like, or barge like, as much as you want. Like just add or barge. On, I don't know. Am I add a one thing to that. Like if you are a rail rider and you want to be up front, you need to prepare yourself. You need to be there early. You need to get once everybody is up Apple there. Said so. Don't come pushing your way in because that's just well. Rude. What you do is you dance your way to the front. Yeah, that's different. Exactly. Yeah. That's different. Yeah. Listen, yeah. Okay. that's they different. Yeah, go. that's different. Than you got to be like slick with drunk it. Drunkenly yep. barging. Yeah. So if you get to the front and no one notices you, that's pe- perfectly fine. That's within yeah. normal, like you, yeah. that's festival etiquette. So, I I believe really strongly in that. But when you're coming in, elbows loud, and then you're looking at your friend like laughing, like you're cool. You got in front of all these people. That's definitely not etiquette. Yeah, and that's that. not. We got we have a sweet. lot more people coming this year. It's um, welcome them. Yes. At least it's twelve. A, it's a at big least twelve. That's at a good least number. twelve. <laughs> at least twelve. It's, it's, Dang, it's scaled God. up for sure. Uh, <laughs> so there will, you know, that that will probably be a thing. Packed yeah. at the front kind of deal. That's okay. Uh, bust, I'm down for packed. Yeah, 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 yeah. cool. Just don't be a dick. One having had it's, it's like how, Harrison how, said. There's a difference of dancing your way in. Then if you're dancing, people make room for you yes, and dance with absolutely. you. When you Part just the yeah, you feel me, like excuse it, me, no. excuse me. And, there, and a lot of times it's that person that's trying to carry like four drinks back to their crew and they're spilling it on everybody. <laughs> excuse me, excuse me. Well, it, like, God bless that guy because he yeah, went for the, the drinks, team. Man. Yeah, he Fuck went to go water for the dance with through. the drinks. Yeah. So. Okay, I got I got two little ones. Two, what, two. No, to add. Well, to you add only get it, one. The, the barger thing. It's his thing, birthday month. Aaron he can get two. It. So uh, the other thing <laughs> is, when a band is playing and you're there, you know it's it's okay to like talk to your friend, like, dude, that reminds me, of, or did you hear that? But to be the person that's standing there talking about something that has nothing to do, don't dude, be talking. Dude, this week at work, yeah. man, I was in this meeting. Or, this or guy. I've seen a lot of times with like dudes saying, dude, look at her over there, like being creepy and being loud of like, you know, girl scouting. Well, you do have to talk loud like, to hear. So. Yeah. No TED Talks. <laughs> yeah, so realize yes. no we're, there, we're there to see the band on stage, not listen to about your week or the other festival you went to or going to. Nobody be, cares. Be, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Be respectful with that. And then this no one. No chomping. This one, this is coming from an, a, an older dude. This is something that really puts me off at festivals. If you are an older man, do not be creeping on the young girls. It's fucking oh, disgusting. Yeah. I see it a lot. I've said stuff to older dudes a few times like that. Like You're old enough to be her grandpa, and she don't want nothing to do with you. Yeah. Quit quit doing that. And let, If that girl wants something to do with you, she will initiate it and be like, I really like old men. I have daddy issues or something. <laughs> don't be a creepy old dude. That, that really... Like gets awareness, awareness, and that goes and back, back to, to the, consideration. Like, consideration. Keeping your hands to you, you know. Yeah. Don't yeah. tell me no lies and keep your hands to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> wow! All right, Apple, <laughs> take it, took us home. All, all right. right, again, all this stuff is like, if we've said it, it's something that's got under our skin at a show, and and like Jack said, there ain't we no don't fucking like rules. rules. There ain't no fucking rules, man. Do whatever the hell you want. Yeah. Just be cool. Don't be a dick. And then everybody yeah. has a blast that way. And I'm going to say this. Uh, we've been to two Mojo Three. Family? Three Mojo third, Family right? Fest. This is our third. I've never had any of these problems at Mojo Family Fest. I, I honestly nice. have nice. to say that. Yeah. That's good. That's good. So, yeah. That's I, not to say that it hasn't happened. Didn't happen Just, to me. It happens on a smaller scale than... Mm-hmm other festivals yeah. i've noticed but sure. these things do come up it's a public event yes you know you can't we're not trying to tell anybody they can't come so it's bound to happen but yeah man there's a lot you can do to mitigate that from happening and i i have to say too this uh pacific northwest community the live music community that's up here 
is some of the kindest, most awesome, yeah, and fun self policing to, to go to shows with and around in on the planet. Truly, yeah. yeah, it's it. It was a trip for us, like moving from Vegas and then going to shows here. It's a whole different animal up here. Like people are there for the music. They're there for each other. They're there for the the experience of being at a live show. And that creates a, a different kind of energy, you know? And I think that the things like Mojo Family Fest really personify that in a real and visceral kind of a way. Like this thing was born out of the need to be together. And that's kind of what lies at the heart of it is like, let's be together. You know, truly. Absolutely. Where, where do we go to get tickets, Jack? You can go to bodimojo.com. Bodimojo.com. Um, yeah, man. And it's pretty there. Oh, one thing I want to mention, dude, it's rough out there for festivals right now. I don't know if you're noticing this, dude. but there's it's they're dropping like flies and it's like something's going on. I think it's a what we're seeing is a perfect storm economically mixed with high level corporate greed that's coming to a bubble. You see bigger, bigger festivals that have been exploiting for so long. And now the little people aren't willing to be exploited. Chickens are coming they don't have the money. So something's going down. But like one thing we want to do with always with Mojo Family Fest, um, you know, we want to make it affordable. So it's under 150 bucks this year. And I think for the value you get and people are telling us like, you know, a, a lot of people have said you charge more or charge less. But but really, I think um, we would rather have more people there. And we want you to be, um, you want, we want you to come if you're able to financially. And we want to make that as accessible for everybody. Mm. So, um, that's just really important to us. If you volunteer, do you get in for free? No, you have to pay double. That's what I yeah, think. Yeah. yeah. It's a yeah. weird. Hell yeah. Thing, but. Okay. What do you hope? Um, and I want to hear from each one of you. What do you, what's your hope for your part in, of the festival this year? What do you want people to get out of it? I hope to hope that they get out of it. Come Good away question. with. I mean. A tan butthole. No. That's hard. I mean, I don't want to <laughs> tell anybody what they have to get out no, of. No, I'm just like, what, what would you like hope someone would, you know, like you get or, okay. or, like, you know, give them something to take home from, you know, hopefully with. new friendships, you know? Okay. Yeah. Well, that's yeah, that's cool. great. Yeah. That's great. That, that usually is what happens. You know, people meet people that they didn't know before. Yep. You know? Yeah. I mean, that's how I met. No, actually I met you guys before uh, the fest, obviously. Yeah. But I've definitely met a, a good amount of people through through the festival. It's a good networking opportunity. Mm, yeah, it is. Yeah. I think for me, it's, uh, I think like eight times out of 10, I go to like, I went to like Magna Ball and it wasn't the music. It was like the cool like midnight set or it's mm. like this cool thing that happens that isn't just Scheduled. kind of looped into every, like every music festival. So whatever that is, even if it's like conversation that you have at a campsite that you never would have had otherwise, or it's this cool mysterious thing that new might experience. or may not happen yeah just a new experience that you don't get i'm always looking forward to that 1 a.m 2 a.m you know what it's time for time for a little oh. land navigation course <laughs> <laughs> little uh little little uh little little s- <laughs> <laughs> i mean <What>? yeah but <laughs> Wait, wow. wait, wait what, what were you saying? Getting lost, go out in the trees, just getting getting strange. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm down. I, you know, I live for that moment when I think we're all familiar with it, like at the heart of a jam that's been going on for a while where suddenly the energy is all sort of uniform. Yeah. And everybody is experiencing, even if it's just for a, a moment, the same thing. Mm. And I think that's uh, one of those, you know, transcendent experiences that can only come from something like this. Yeah. And uh, I mean, from a like musician standpoint, that is very special, but I believe that from the stage to the audience, it is the same experience in that oh, moment. Oh, wow. Really? I think so. <laughs> wow. Well, you've been, you've been part of an audience, and, so, you've, been, and yeah, you've been part of that, so you'd, so you you'd would be a great person to know. Well, Has, yeah, this, has, has it, it happened to you in, in on either side? It has, yeah. yeah. On both sides? More, more. I would say more so from... As an audience member, actually. No pressure in the audience. I mean, right. the band, it's like you're going with them. 
you're all right. going well that's yeah, yeah. together yeah, if, if, together on this yeah, journey if, i mean if you are locked into the music um then i think you're going to reach that same place that the musicians have yeah, reached yeah. Uh, i think ego might be the only separation because there is i mean i get there is oh, an right. enjoyment of yeah. being the guy who does it as well mm. and then when you're that's not fair. i don't know like i get that in a crowd when i'm in a crowd i'm like oh, i want to be up there you know <laughs> but it's like other I than see, that okay. like when you, if you're truly truly in a jam and you're 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 a conduit and you're letting it flow through you and you're getting out of your own way you know it's like I agree with that. There's it, really no, di- there in, should be no. In my experience, separation. it takes, it, it's taken like a day or two in to a festival to, mm, to get to that. Yeah. It's not like, like on, yeah, it's not on night one, yeah. you know, but it's something on maybe on the second or third. And, uh, it's, it's, it's like a, a culmination feeling. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Come by our camp. I'll give you something to get there on night one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just want to say also, dude, this guy is a fucking shredder. Mr. Owen Kelly over here. Ooh. Owen oh, Kelly. He, boop, 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 boop. We have been reaching like, it's been a really, really exciting time in our rehearsals and on stage knowing like we're going deeper within, further left, further up and farther right, like all of it and wow. like exploring all those things together. It's been, it's been feeling so good and we're really grateful to have him in the band. He really like, he's a sneaky dude. He's sneaky musically, <laughs> you know, he's not... <laughs> It's it's been it's been a ride. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Hell no. Yeah. Don't tell. You, can't, well, you know. You don't want him telling secrets. No secrets. Okay. Yes. Three can keep a secret if two are dead. That's true. Mark yeah. Clint. Don't tell me a secret. Uh, I thought that was. Uh, but is is there is there a theme <laughs> for uh, Mojo okay, Family Fest right. this year? Do we know about it or is it's there? It's a. You will figure it out when you get there. Okay. It All is. Right. We have a over the three nights. It's going to be unfolding, and when it's over, nobody's still going to be sure what it is. <laughs> like fish. <laughs> you'll, you'll figure it out. Um, Jack. What do you want people to come away with? Uh, I get, I kind of with Harrison about that. I don't know. I feel like that to me is the wrong question. I try not to th- focus on what um, my wants of what people to get out of I it. Like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Because sometimes it works and then sometimes it sets myself up for failure. Yeah. But I really, yeah, yeah. I really hope and believe in in the magic of bringing people together, like truly that word, capital M, mm-hmm. magic. And I really believe that like that is a f- super powerful thing. And I, I I don't know how to lean into it sometimes, but I've, I think I'm getting more clues about how you can like kind of like just let it flow through. Cause I really, really do. We all know about it. if you, whatever festival you've been to or a large gathering there, you know, like, uh, I don't know, man, I was like, at Oregon Country Fair, my lips were dry as shit. And I was like, God, I wish I had some Vaseline. Someone just like puts it right in front of me in a second. I was like, what the fuck? You know, just weird shit like that. And I think uh, synchronicities, synchronicities. I really like that. I want to lean in. Ooh. Shout out to the chapstick fairy. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, I think that the trick for that is to like, you create the best container possible with the least amount of distractions to that thing. And then just hope for the best. You've created the container, you're there, and you're open to have the experience, and then that's it. When you start putting your hands on it and, like, trying to maneuver and control, it's just like when you're in a jam. You can't control that. I mean, there's maneuvers, but you're not in control of that thing. Mm. It's 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 happening to you and with you. So, well, yeah. I wanted, I wanted to add something to what you guys were both saying about the takeaway of, of the, uh, like new friendships, but also something, and this is specific to last year, is uh, strengthening friendships and getting to know each other better. Like last year, the one that stands out is getting to see Harrison on a whole nother level oh, I've never yeah, seen. His family. When your family oh, was yeah. there. In fact, it almost it almost kind of makes me tear up right now. It was so cute <laughs> to see you <laughs> with your family there. And like I saw this different side of Harrison that, that was just so dope to get to know you better. And same thing with all of us. We all we share in these festival experiences. And like you were saying, like like once you get into like the second and the last day all the magic is out. Everybody's cards are on the table. It's just the mingling. The stew has been made. And what we all get to take out of that is the new friendships, the strengthening of friendships, the 
the re- rejuvenation of old friendships of somebody you mm. haven't seen in a while, like seeing Thor Aww, <laughs> last yeah. year at there. We don't get to see him a whole lot. He's got a new kid, but he was there, and it, it, that's so special. Just the, the bonding that comes out of it is that's what it. I look forward that's to. This, the summer camp part of it, too. That's like, that really is when it feels like you're going to summer camp, you know? Yeah. It's yeah. like someone you haven't, like, connected with, and now you have three days, and then and sometimes it's a new person that you, or, like, somewhat new that you've kind of been yeah. acquainted yeah. with. And now you're best friends or something. So wait, what, wait, Chris, did, uh, Chris, did yeah, you? Chris oh yeah, Chris. Yeah, okay. Everybody went. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Um, I got this. All right. Sorry, <laughs> I was going I back this. again. Uh, <laughs> listen, out there, um, go to bodymojo.com and click on the link that says Mojo Family Fest and buy your tickets. Don't, don't. Okay, don't wait. This is don't something. Wait. Yeah, this is something that doesn't get stressed enough. But buy your tickets in advance. Don't like show up at the festival and like, can I buy tickets here at the at the gate? Like, do it beforehand. So okay, some people have to wait till they get paid on Friday I get or it. something. That's I get fine. It. That, I'm not talking. We do to have that. tickets at the gate, right? Yes, we got tickets at the gate, but, but buy, buy your tickets. Buy, buy your buy tickets, tickets now. But they're, they're ten times as much. <laughs> yes, they, they are. And, and look, this handling isn't, fees. This isn't a thing to like give you a rule or anything. This is to better help them prepare for how many people are going to be there. That's right. it. And it's for you too. Like getting excited about something once you have it in hand. True. That's yes. totally that's like, real. True. Even if it's a week or two before you get you, you're excited, and that's all you can think about yeah. for those two weeks. That's you know? true. Yeah, and if if you. Uh, you know, if you were on the fence or you've never been to a festival or whatever, just do it. Yeah, just do it, do man. It. Yeah. And we'll be there if, if you get weird and we'll come hang out with us, man. We'll, we'll, we'll take care of you. All right? We're all cool. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> just be considerate. Don't be a dick. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know if we mentioned the dates yet. Can you guys put that in at the beginning? <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. When we do the intro. Yeah, we'll, oh, do, it. Okay, yeah, okay. we'll do an intro. And- what are the dates? June 28th to 30th. Okay. There it Friday is. through last Sunday. week of June. Last It'll, week of June. We'll put it in the intro. Also, a link for tickets will be in the show notes for yep. those of you that have listened this far in. Um, and then, uh, yeah, support your local music scene, man. All right. Anything we've, we forgot to mention? Yeah. Hey, we got two after parties for Bodie Mojo Family Fest. Uh, okay. They're happening two. in June. They are six, um, sorry, pre parties. Six six at the get down. Karen, yeah. the dancing lady, is turning sixty years old. It's a big, it's a big number thing for her, and she is throwing a huge party with Rambler, who's playing Family Mystic, and then an assortment, a little a smorgasbord of musicians Smorgas. throughout I heard the night. That no simple road is uh, um, emceeing. <laughs> <laughs> no simple road is emceeing it. Let's yes. go. Yes. Let's so that's go. at the get down. Um, the Saturday before, we have another one. Uh, with Super Secret Band and Sean McLean, the Vibe Contenders at the Goodfoot. Okay. So two of my favorite venues in Portland, and we're gonna we're gonna get people excited about the fest. All right, oh, yeah. ticket wow. links will be in the show notes for those as well. And uh, everybody, take care of yourselves, man. Hydrate, yeah. safety third, smile a stranger. And don't be a dick. You know what? <laughs> yeah, not a creepy smile. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> normal smile. And and you know what? If you can do it without getting in trouble or embarrassing yourself. Go, go, sun, go sun your butthole. Sun the butthole. Yeah. All right. Go, go get some get some UV in there. Set and setting. <laughs> <laughs> we love y'all. Peace.
This is Krista Makes, guitarist and vocalist for Less Than Jake, and host of Krista Makes a Podcast, a songwriting podcast where every week I'm joined by an amazing guest to break down the writing, recording, and release of one iconic song from their career. In our giant evergreen back catalog of episodes, we've had rock legends such as Dee Snyder and Huey Lewis, punk rock favorites like Mark Hoppus, Fat Mike, and Brett Gurowitz, and up-and-coming artists of today, such as Liz Stokes of The Beths and Genesis Owusu. We've had guests from all genres and styles of music, and I guarantee that if you peruse our back catalog, you'll see several episodes that'll make you say, man, I gotta hear that. Whether you're a fan of music or a creator of music yourself, you'll take away a whole new appreciation for the songs you know and love. Chris Makes a Podcast is available for free on all the places you could possibly listen to podcasts. And new episodes come out every Monday.